Hi, a listener of my weekly Security Now podcast thought to ask what it is that Spinrite exactly does and how it works its magic. I realized I had never really explained that before, so I did. I'll share that with you now. So, okay, just a minute on to answer Sasha's question, what this does, um, what Spinrite does. Um, Recently, I've been seeing the term bit rot, and I'm not sure why bit rot has been in the news recently, but there, there, there is a problem that hard drive data does degrade over time. We know there's things called so-called grown defects and G-R-O-W-N, that is defects growing over time. And try as they have, and they've done an amazing job, manufacturers are unable to produce absolutely perfect media. And that's become a bigger problem as we've been storing greater densities on these magnetic platters because what it's done is by making the bits smaller, it's effectively made any defects bigger. So... In order to deal with the fact that media is not perfect, and it has never been, even back when we were only storing 10 megabytes on disks, all of us in you know who are old school, Leo, you'll certainly remember when there were there were little charts printed on the outside of the disk drives showing the location of defects that had been found at the factory. Right, and what. What people who were formatting these drives were supposed to do was manually enter the list of defects into <laughs> the low-level formatter, wow. which would then mark those sectors as bad. Well, it quickly became clear that, that OEMs were not taking the time to do this. They, just, they were just pumping these systems out, and they weren't you know, manually entering into a low-level formatter what the defects were. So one of Spinrite's first uses 20 years ago was people would run it on brand new drives and it would find defects, often in sectors they were using, which was a concern. So Spinrite would relocate the data to non-defective sectors, mark those sectors bad, and then keep them from being used. So Spinrite was was doing the work that should have been done by the OEMs but wasn't being done by the OEMs. So over time, drives evolved. Drives began handling their own defective sectors, meaning that even though they were there were still defects, they would they would manage them themselves. So then Spinrite's job changed. Then, by running Spinrite on these drives, it would show the drive that there was a problem that the drive wasn't aware of because the the drive isn't omniscient. It only knows there's a problem if it tries to read the data and has a problem reading it. So, So the way that works is that there's error correction technology which is able to correct runs of bad bits up to a certain length. That is, you might have, like, you could sort of think of it as a pimple on the surface, but the data only intersects sort of a, an edge of the pimple. So a few bits cannot be stored accurately there because there's just a problem in the media. So the, the drive incorporates technology. It actually stores extra data at the end of the sector, which very cleverly allows it to correct any small problem which it may have encountered in reading the sector. Now, the, the, what can happen over time is just because of the the head flying over the surface, there is some interaction. There is an air bearing. There is a little bit of mechanical flexing of the the surface of the disk. 
And that can interact with this pimple to make it bigger over time. So while, for example, maybe only four bits had a problem originally, that grew, the defect grew to five or six or seven as this, as this problem on the surface grew over time. So what happens is, again, the drive doesn't know there are these growing problems until it reads the sector. So one of the things that Spinrite to do, does today, when I, when I talk about it being a preventive maintenance of, of pre preventative maintenance value is it simply goes out and reads the entire drive. It also writes it, flipping all the bits upside down, and then reads that, and then flips them back and reads it again. What that does is it sort of exercises the surface, and it allows the drive itself to realize, whoa, we have been able to correct a certain spot that was only four bits long in problem, but now it's eight. And say that the drive's maximum ability to correct is 12 bits. Well, at some point, at some threshold, four it might have been comfortable with. It got up to eight, and then it says, oh, you know, this is getting worrisomely close to our maximum ability of, for example, 12 bits to correct. So right now, before it gets any worse, we're going to relocate this sector. It didn't bother when it was just four bits of problem. It bothers when it's eight. So it relocates the sector itself and puts a new good sector in in place. So that's one of the reasons that people say, you know, I've been running Spinrite for years and I've never had a problem, but it it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Well, it's actually doing something. The problem is that it's it's part of the hidden management and maintenance, surface maintenance that drive all drives do today. So there's really nothing I can show. I I can show and do show on on the smart page that sectors are being relocated and that errors are being corrected. That smart analysis page sometimes scares people because it shows, wait a minute, this thing says we're correcting so many errors per megabyte. And it's like, yes, that's the reality of today's drives is they're correcting errors all the time because we've made the bits so small in order to make the density so high that no surfaces are error-free. They've got, they've got errors all over them, but we're just we're taking them in stride. So one of the things that Spinrite does from a preventive maintenance standpoint is work with the drive to show it it's got problems and induce it to relocate sectors to safety before those problems get too big. But we also hear testimonials all the time of people saying, I was getting blue screens. I could no longer boot. I could no longer run a certain application until I ran Spinrite. So the other thing Spinrite is able to do essentially is beg. <laughs> it just begs for the data because we would like to believe that drives are digital, that they're just ones and zeros, and that's what's being stored. But the fact is, down at the sizes we're dealing with, it's all become analog. And so we're not just storing digital data anymore. We're not really storing digital data. We're storing analog data, which, was, which we reinterpret as digital data. And so Spinrite has a whole um, vocabulary of things it's able to do to, to get a drive to read a sector it will not read one last time. We just beg. We go out a different distance and come in at a different velocity from from both directions hoping that the draw that the head will happen to be in a slightly different position where just one last time instead of it being 13 bits that it that are, are uncorrectable it'll be 12 um uh, spinrite has this thing called dynastat where, which is a dynamic statistics system where it's a actually able to reassemble what, what must be in the missing area 
in order for that sector to be corrected, it's able to essentially interpolate the missing data and reverse engineer what was originally there, even though the drive won't read it. So there's all kinds of things that Spinrite can do if we wait too long to use it. Of course, everyone waits too long. They don't, most people aren't buying it for preventive maintenance because, you know, it's not cheap. It's $89, but you own it for life. I'm, I've been keeping it alive for the last 20 decades or two decades. So you can imagine you're, you'll end up being able to amortize that purchase out over time. So that's what it does. It really can recover data, which the drive tells you it cannot read. Spinrite says, just give it to us one last time. When it does, then the drive says, oh my God, I'm so happy I was able to read that one last time. It relocates <laughs> that you. data to safety and puts a, a new sector back with the re recovered data. And then your computer boots again, or your applications run, or you can access your database or whatever. It's better if you run Spinrite over it every few months or, you know, often enough, no one really knows what that is, but every few months is probably often enough to show it there are problems evolving before they get to the point that you're, you know, holding your breath and crossing your fingers, that Spinrite will bring your data back, which more often than not, it seems able to. So that's the whole story. There's the Spinrite story. Hi again. So, I imagine you now know more about Spinrite than you ever thought you wanted to. If you have not had a chance yet to look at the testimonials from Spinrite's actual customers, please take a second to do so. I think you'll be convinced. Thanks very much.